we found the current flowing into and through the power supply was 12.51 milliamps. So in order to solve for current through the 300, we need to find how much of, is, how much of it is lost through the different branching that it must do as it flows through the circuit. The first branch it comes across is this point right here, where some of the current flows through these points here, ending up here. That's the first branch from the first black dot to the second black dot. That's branch one. And here is the second branch through the 1.7K resistor. So we need to simplify the circuit into equivalent resistances so that there is only two resistors that the current branches through. Uh, I simplified the circuit down to this point here where we're left with current flowing through one branch, the 1.7K resistor, I'll call that I1, and the second branch which is an equivalent resistance of all other resistors. So everything, uh, I'll delete this uh, circle right after I make it, but everything here, all the resistors here, are now equivalent to the 393.78 ohm resistor. And that was just used through using uh, parallel resistor shortcuts and series equivalent resistances. You can only have two branches if you're finding, if you're needing to find how the current divides from a branch point. So this is the current divider formula. You have your I2. In this case it's the branch of an equivalent resistance to all other resistors in the circuit. And that is branching, that is the opposite branch from I1, which is the 1.7k ohm that is right there. So just plugging the numbers into the formula, you know your I, that's what we found before, as 12.51 milliamps. You know R1 is your 1.7, your R2 is your equivalent resistance from the rest of the circuit there. You plug it in and you get I2. So I2 is it started off as 12.51 from the power supply and now after that first branch it's a little less this is where that current is so the current at this point in the circuit is 10.19 milliamps there's still one more branch to go it's going to be a lot easier you don't have to do any more equivalent resistances it's just the 1.7k and 300 ohm resistor. You have to do another current divider at that point. So looking at the second branch point, you have a new I current here, which is now the 10.16 milliamps. So you can see this part of the circuit here is the same as this part here. This is our second major branch point. Our new I was the I2 that we found in the first major instance where we used the current divider rule. So our new I is our 10.16 milliamps. We have a 1.6k ohm resistor going through our new I1 branch, a 300 300 ohm resistor resisting the current flowing through our new I2 branch. You plug in the numbers and you get a new I2 current flowing through the three, the branch which has the 300 ohm resistor. And remember from the question at the very beginning of the video, that was the current that we wanted to find. We wanted to find the current flowing through the 300 ohm resistor. And in order to do that, we first needed to do a delta Y transformation to get a circuit which we could get easy equivalent resistances from. From that current divider rule twice to get the current flowing 
through the 300 ohm resistor. It's also possible to solve using the mesh analysis method, which I'll do now. The desired technique of solving that question on page 290 was obviously intended by the authors of the book to be done using delta y, and that's what we did before, but you can also solve it using mesh analysis. I'm just going to show you how you do that. You can, without using delta y or current divider or equivalent resistance methods, you can go straight to mesh and solve it a heck of a lot easier and faster actually. Developing three current loops, I1, I2, and I3, we're solving for I3. That's the question. What's the current through the 300 ohm resistor here? And if we solve the I3 loop, that is the answer, the current through the 300 ohm resistor. Developing our equations, that goes back to E set 120 using mesh analysis. The 300 comes from all the resistors in the I1 loop, 100 and 800. 4 comes from 4 volts. Minus 100 IB, because IB is shared with the I2 loop. Minus 800 IC, because 800 is the resistor shared by the IC loop. In this diagram, actually instead of I1, I2, and I3, it should be IA, IB, and IC. It's uh, just a, mis a mistake I made in drawing the loops up there. But going through the mesh equations, if you don't have a Casio calculator that can do three variable equations like this, you should definitely think about getting one. Or if you have a different calculator, definitely know how to use that three variable equation uh, solving systems because it's as easy as just punching in the numbers and you get your answers straight away. Remember from our first using the uh, other techniques, the current flowing through the power supply, 12.51 milliamps, it's the same. It's exactly the same answer. And the current flowing through the 300 ohm resistor as we found before, same answer. I think we got 8.64 milliamps in the last uh, method using the mesh analysis method, exactly the same, just a little rounding error, 8.63. So two identical answers, two very different methods. I hope this video was useful. I'm gonna be making a lot more in the future. If you have questions, comments, post them, email me. I'd be happy to get back to you and specifically I'd be happy to make more videos on any specific questions you have in the book. Like you read a question, you got halfway, you got stuck, don't know how to proceed. If I can do it, if I can sort of figure it out, I'd be delighted to make a video about it. That's sort of what I hope this channel uh, is going to become. Okay, thanks. This is Mike.